It's one of the world's most unique and diverse environments, northern Colombia's Orinoco Basin. It's an area of uncharted rivers, undiscovered species, and unparalleled beauty. And it's also home to one of the world's most mysterious animals, the botto, or river dolphin. With long noses and pinkish skin, river dolphins are descended from their marine cousins. I've come here to meet this man, Fernando Trujillo. He spent 30 years in some of the most remote parts of the Amazon and Orinoco, studying river dolphins to try and safeguard their future. Look, there right. is one there. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Fantastic. So it's incredible. I've just had my first glimpse of a pink river dolphin. And they're clearly very shy, but genuinely curious about our presence here. Now I've seen one, I can understand why these animals are such a mystery. You only get a glimpse as they surface for air before returning to their secret lives in the murky river water. So elusive and found in such remote areas, scientists can only guess at their true numbers, probably a few tens of thousands. That may sound like a lot, but they're spread throughout South America's mighty rivers, and changes to their fragile ecosystem now threaten them with extinction. You've been studying these dolphins for 30 years or so. What are you seeing in terms of the threats that they're facing now? So the threats are growing. They are not being stopped. And there are more dams, there are more uh, fishing, there are more deforestation. Deforestation is destroying the dolphins' natural habitats, giving way to agriculture that pollutes river basins. And then there's gold mining, growing rapidly in South America's jungles. Mercury, used to extract gold, poisons all river life, especially top predators like the river dolphin. The gold is attracting a lot of people to the Amazon, uh, mainly for illegal activities. But it's hard to lessen these threats unless you know what's important to river dolphins. Now it's the rainy season, they're moving into the flooded forest to feed. Look, do you see? But how far do they travel? Where do they raise their young? Dolphins are very hard to study because yeah. if you think they spend most of the time underwater, they are very elusive. So we don't know uh, much about the, 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 the secret life of these animals. So we decided uh, during the last two years to catch dolphins and to put tags and to follow and track the dolphins. A pioneering satellite tracking program will give them the first detailed information on dolphin behavior and which areas are most important for their survival. With limited resources for conservation, that knowledge could be crucial in prioritizing areas for protection. But to tag a dolphin, first you have to catch one. Out on the main river, Fernando's team prepare to net a pair of dolphins we've just seen. They circle the animals while paying out a net. If they're fast enough, the pair should be trapped. But not this time. The dolphins slip away. The skills these men are using to catch dolphins aren't new. They're all professional fishermen. Their industry was, until a recent ban, a main reason for dolphins' decline. Fishermen would kill dolphins that interfere with their nets and deliberately caught them to cut up for cheap bait. Fishermen now work with Fernando to try and protect the dolphins that remain. Together, they've traveled throughout South America to study different groups of the animals. This is footage from Brazil, where they're catching a pair in a tributary of the Amazon. They weigh, measure, and tag them before releasing them back into the wild. Rodolfo leads the team of expert fishermen. When you started fishing, did you ever imagine you'd become a world expert in catching these dolphins for science? De verdad, nosotros lo que pensábamos tú sabes era pescar y nunca llegar a capturarlas ni somos ya sabemos pues las personas que andamos en eso sabemos ya cómo se trata de o sea la forma de agarrarla, de cuidarla. 
Back at Fernando's waterlogged research base, he shows me some of the first results from his satellite tagging project. The data shows hot spots for dolphins. The confluences of rivers appear to be important for feeding. Mothers and calves tend not to move from nursery areas, whereas males migrate long distances between seasons. Major clues in focusing conservation efforts. Here you can see some of the maps uh, that show how the dolphins are moving. Th that ones are in the Amazon, but that ones are here in, in the Orinoco. Uh -huh. And this is how this is relevant to the conservation of the dolphins. If you, if you know what areas are important for them, you can make sure you protect them? Exactly. If we identify some specific spots, we can try to protect these small areas rather than protect the whole river. That would be a major step towards better protecting river dolphins. But there's an important scientific one that needs overcoming first. And the expertise to solve it is hundreds of miles away in the capital, Bogota. Susanna. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice Thanks very much you. for having us. I think we still have a lot of things that we need to continue studying and discovering. Um, we still are not clear how many species there are. Compared to the knowledge that we have regarding marine dolphins, river dolphins are very, very unknown. Using tiny samples of blubber sent to her by Fernando, Susanna is discovering Colombia's single species of river dolphin may in fact be several species. Studying the dolphin's genetics suggests there could be as many as four separate species. And given the threats, that means a unique group of dolphins could go extinct before it's even known to science. Currently, we're dealing with one species that is categorized as endangered, that we still don't know how many animals there are, but probably more than 10,000. But if we divide those 10,000 into four different groups, then how many we have? 2,500? And then that's a very low number that in many cases will put them as critically endangered. And it will require a different type of effort and ideas to really be able to protect and make these populations grow. Do you feel like you're working against the clock? I mean, do you think time is running out for dolphins? Time is definitely running out for these dolphins. If we pay attention to this, invest in the science that is required, we will be able to do it. Yeah. If we let time go by, even by two or three years, we may be in trouble. Scientists like Susanna and Fernando aren't just sounding the alarm for these mysterious and intelligent animals, but also for what their decline represents. The human destruction of South America's forests the gradual preventable loss of one of the last great wildernesses on the planet and the incredible diversity of life it supports.